This video shows my journey coming face to face with the real mountain gorillas. So you need to move away. If you're new here, I'd like to invite you to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so that you can get alerts every time I post new videos. And please, if you are any one of my subscribers, thank you for subscribing and please also view my other videos. I have a lot of videos, some with very low views, but hey, I invite you to watch them as well. It's one of the ways you can be able to support this channel. Gorillas are actually found mostly in equatorial Africa. We have almost 200,000 gorillas in existence. We have the eastern and western gorillas. The eastern gorilla has two sets of gorillas. One is the eastern lowland gorillas and the endangered mountain gorilla with a population of around a thousand. During one of my recent trips to Rwanda, there was a public holiday. So I arranged to see how I could be able to visit these uh, gorillas during the holiday as I continued with the work week. arrangements to visit Volcanoes National Park in Mosanze. Good morning from Mosanze, Rwanda. This way you start the whole uh, gorilla trek at the Volcano National Park. Uh, I came in yesterday in the evening, left Kigali around uh, a few minutes to six and was here a bit just before nine. It rained heavily yesterday when I was, I was coming. It got some a bit foggy at some point and it was scary. It's a very winding road. Uh, the drive was very slow and very dangerous at times because it's very mount you're going up the hill it's winding at times you can't tell you know so sharp corners not knowing if it's a car on the other end and then it gets a bit foggy you can't even see where you're going it was crazy found the hotel uh got an well it's a nice hotel considering the price uh because i'm paying around 30 dollars for a night uh, i think the best thing is you actually come in the night before and uh, you're able to actually uh, sleep over and then wake up like I've woken up, you know, 5.30, prepare and then you can be ready for the trek, not feeling like you've already done another two-hour journey, you know. So the plan is to now uh, prepare, have some breakfast and head out to the place where they do the briefings and uh, hopefully get uh, the sh one of those shorter treks because my plan is to see if we can do other things today i can do maybe some caves or some kayaking and stuff like that before i go back to kigali uh, so this is uh, the plan and hopefully be able to see some mountain gorillas because that's the main plan not to trek but to see the mountain gorillas so if you don't see them maybe you get to at least trek but i think the chances are normally very high <laughs> Thank you. 
Unfortunately, the day did not begin as planned. I just discovered that I actually needed to do a COVID test. Since the COVID test are done at the airport had actually expired, you need to have a PCR COVID test done within 24 hours. And so instead of going straight to the briefing center, I had to go to a hospital in Mosanze. Then hope that by the time the results came in, I still had time to actually go up the mountain. So I didn't even have time to have breakfast. By the time I got to the briefing center at the Volcanoes National Park, the team had actually dispersed. But this turned out to be a blessing in disguise. I am at the gorilla trek where it starts. This is such a beautiful place. Look at that mountain. The park rangers there were very good told me to wait for the tests in this very very beautiful area uh, and then eventually Odile who ended up being the guide who took us up she told us look let's just start heading there because now your car cannot actually uh, go to where uh, cannot actually take the route that we normally take so we'll take a different route we took the car to a certain area and then started going up the hill and the plan was once we got to the park entrance if by that time the test results were in then we'd go in if they were positive we'd have to go down <laughs> If you go to come call closer to you, you move back. Say this was the elephant passing here. Wow. In the case they do like a chest beating, okay. like the silver back, yes. or the black backs, yeah. never do that back to them. <laughs> yes, that's, the that's yes. For the babies having a um, uh, chest beating is a way of having fun, yeah, showing yeah. happiness. The black box has a meaning. It's like that they are really very strong. Yes. They want to show their strength. Yes. So if you show back your strength, then it's like a call for fight. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you're right. And these colors have a language. We can get to them. We say, yeah. In a way of just telling them that everything is fine. Yeah. Gola comes closer to you. You do the vocalization. <clears throat> okay. Right. 
they tell you saying we respect you everything is good and they never cough or sneeze while facing the gorillas you have to cover your mouth yeah. nose and they look to opposite direction from the gorillas and using flash while taking photos not enough. eye contact with the gorillas is fine but not staring at them and take a photo of me on this rock <laughs> we are here Thank you very much. The experience is truly worth the tiring hike up the hill and the expenses that you pay to go and see them. During this COVID, you know, prices came down. With the South African passport, you're just like the local there. Uh, the rate is still high compared to what you'd pay in Uganda, but it was even a greater experience because I got to do it more like an exclusive trip, you know. If you're to pay for an exclusive trip, you're told it would be very expensive for you to actually just pay for one guide and one truck and go up. But, uh, normally they do give you someone with a gun to just in case, um, you know, elephant or anything comes in and they need to disperse. We didn't have anyone with a gun. We were told there are buffaloes there. We even saw a truck where an elephant had uh, just passed. When we went back, we saw another print for the buffalo. Did I meet the people, our people? These are the truckers. These, are the truckers. These people, they do, I can say, uh, hard work. Yes, finding them. They start early in the morning. They come, start following, they go, start trying to the gorillas. Yes. And it's not like we do for us, it was like a short yes, cut. Yes. It was so easy for yes. them. They pass through the bush, through the ravines, following the gorillas, moving wherever they go, in the nettles, wherever they find them. Yes. Then they keep monitoring them wherever they go, they follow them. Okay. Then they used to stay even here for more hours still. Wow, wow. Around the... For normally, without them, we can't see the gorillas. Yes, <laughs> yes. Be easy because you can't know where to go, where yes, to find them. Yes, yes. Then let's go, let's ready for the gorilla. So we leave uh, the backpacks here. Yes, Twins. So as Odile mentioned, twin gorillas are actually very rare. To date, I think there have been three observed, three sets that have been observed, two that survived. In other areas, rarely do they survive because it's really difficult for the mother to be able to carry the two of them as they go around. And so it was just an awesome blessing to be able to come face to face with not just the most rare of the gorillas, which is the mountain gorillas, but also the twins, which are even more rare. What was that? Something. <laughs> I've been eating. <laughs> so I need to release some yeah. pressure. Yes. <laughs> the first time I saw gorillas mm -hmm. was actually in a zoo in the Netherlands. Yeah. And there were some kids, some Dutch kids, outside the, that enclosing where they were. Mm -hmm. And they looked so sad, what? the kids. Because they thought this is so unfair that they are in a cage. That's why I think when these guys come here, mm -hmm. they feel so happy when they're able to see the animals in. in, the in yeah. After seeing the twins, we then went up to now get to see the silverback gorilla. And we got to see it with one of its wives and kids, which was just an awesome out of this world experience, being very close to this gentle giant. Thank you. 
like we have um, those young ones playing to each other the little one is coming closer yeah if you see them playing some of them they come come running to you avoid avoid getting too much close to the babies mothers are not happy yes find a way of moving yes okay. so you need to move away. If you're a parent, I'm sure you know this exact thing that is happening here. When you want to take an afternoon nap and the kid just wants to play around you. <laughs> this was really beautiful to see. So going down the hill was actually much easier than going up. Going up is so tiring. You run out of breath. If you're unfit like me, especially, I struggled going up that hill. Uh, Dil was more encouraging, saying, Yo, you know, you did better than most. Some are even have to be carried up. You need to wear right for this. You need to have like a long jacket, uh, have gloves, because there are leaves that could actually even cause scratches. <laughs> 
you have to have good boots have something that can cover your jeans because there are ants on, on the way there so you need to be able to uh, just avoid having those ants coming in because that can be another experience <laughs> so this was actually a great experience for me river's gonna cry when you're gone 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 river's gonna cry when you're gone 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 river's gonna cry when you're gone 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 river's gonna cry when you are river's gonna cry when you are river's gonna cry when you're gone Gorilla naming site. For the naming. So the Rwandan gorilla naming ceremony is called Kuita Izina and it's inspired by the Rwandan tradition of naming babies soon after their birth. And during this ceremony, the infant gorillas that were born in Rwanda during the previous year get to receive their names. So it's an opportunity to thank the communities that live around the Volcanoes National Park, the research partners, the vets, and the dedicated conservationists, rangers, and truckers that help keep and protect the gorillas. Hey, I heard you want to leave this place where we grew up. This old town, just leave it all behind. The river's gonna cry when you're gone. The council has decided we shall name him Beauty. <laughs> What's the name in, in, in Kinyarwanda? Uburanga. Uburanga. Yeah. We shall name him Uburanga. <laughs> Chasing us. Land of a thousand hills. So we are back from side so some awesome gorillas and now we go pay the hotel because we had to leave early before clearing eat lunch didn't have breakfast went up the mountain for a hike with no food but we did it so amazing stuff So unfortunately we were not able to do any other activity on that day because apparently since it was a holiday some of the sites we wanted to visit uh, were not, uh, you could not be able to buy tickets then. Uh, for example this is the Mosanze Caves which have like very rich history, we were not able to see them. The other things that you know you could go kayaking around Mosanze as well. So all this we were not able to do and we had to rush back from Mosanze to Kigali. But the trip back this time at least it was during the day and so we got to witness the the actual beauty of Rwanda you know as you went down the hill um, and got uh, way back to Kigali. This was an awesome awesome experience I would recommend it to anyone and everyone. 
So in terms of pricing, it costs around two hundred dollars for the park permit. It cost me another hundred dollars to just uh, for transport, which was very lucky to get because the driver actually took me there, found a place to spend the night, and then uh, waited for me the whole day as I went up the hill, and then he brought me back, and all this for just a hundred dollars. And uh, the hotel obviously was thirty dollars for the room for the night. Uh, it was bed and breakfast. Uh, I didn't get to do the breakfast in the morning, but once I came back from the trip, I was able to do my breakfast as lunch. And when I arrived the previous night, I was able to pay like around eight dollars for dinner. And obviously, there was a fifty dollars for the COVID test. The whole trip cost me around four hundred dollars just to go and see those gorillas. So it is. It wasn't cheap, but it was very worth it. On normal occasions outside the COVID uh, period, it would have cost $500 just for the permit, $500. And for foreigners from other places, it can go up to $1,500. In uh, Uganda, you can probably do it more affordably. But um, either way, the experience for me was awesome. Seeing the twins, seeing the silverback, seeing the small baby doing somersaults. <laughs> Once we got to Kigali, obviously, I had another working week and eventually had to fly back to Nairobi. And on my way back, it is funny, when we got to the airport on time, everything was okay. We got on the plane just before it started raining, then all of a sudden there was a heavy downpour that actually affected our flight. We had to wait for another almost one hour to have the conditions improve. And then after we started our, uh, our way and flying, more or less on the cloud storm, you could see how the storm was happening in the cloud. So I'd like to thank my friends Spacey and Brian from booking the hotel, getting the park permit, getting me transport to and from Kigali. Also the driver that took me there and waited, uh, he did a great job. Odile that uh, was the guy that took uh, me up the uh, mountain, the porter as well who was there, the truckers that helped uh, truck the gorillas, all these people made my experience even better and I thank them all and I thank God for this opportunity to actually be able to see these rare, rare endangered animals. Thank you.